What's up, beautiful people? It's your favorite village boy, Mr. Gaida, baby. And I'm here in the northern part of Nigeria, Kanu, to be precise. Have you ever been here? Are you scared just like me? A brother, forget that and take that trip today. I'm a living testimony. I was super scared of coming to this place. I just wanted to stay here for two days just because of what I've been hearing in the media. I decided to forget the media, come in here, and it's been a week, and I'm still here because I'm living my best life. Be like what am I? Forget the media and take that trip today. That could be your best journey ever. But hey, you know why I'm here? I am here to inspire you. This channel is all about education and inspiration. So let me tell you something. If you are new to the channel, do me a favor, subscribe and be part of this awesome family. I mean, please, we need to hit 700,000 by the end of this month. Do me a favor, like the video and subscribe. You know the kind of story I'm gonna share today? It's about a young Sudanese guy who was born and raised in Kanu, left Kanu to the UK and he decided to come back and start a poultry farm. I've been telling you that it's time to make Africa home again. It's time for each and every African out there, both Africans that were born on the continent and Africans in the diaspora to be part of the change. Let's build Africa together. Do your part. It's time for all of us to be part of the solution, not the problem. Enough of the complaints. Come with me and let's go meet this young and amazing gentleman here in Kano. Hey. My brother. Hey, how are you doing? I'm good, <laughs> good to see you. Good to see you too. No, I, I heard that you are Sudanese living in Nigeria. Yes, that's right. How, how come? Um, you know, we've been, our family has been here for a long time. Oh, okay. Um, it started from our great-grandfather. And then your great-grandfather moved in and here. And then my great-grandfather moved here. And then my grandfather grew up here. And then my dad grew up here. And then it's our generation now. Wow, well, so you here. will also give birth to another... Yes, hopefully. hopefully. It's going to be generation after generation. <laughs> <laughs> my brother, my name is Wadamaya from Ghana. Wadamaya. And then somebody told me about you. Yeah. That you have a poultry farm yeah. with over 30,000 beds. Yes, yes. I'm like yes. I really have to meet you. It's a pleasure to have you guys around. Okay. Uh, my name is Abdullah, mm -hmm. and um, yeah, we've been uh, into poultry for close to five years now. Uh, we've been dealing with um, layers specifically. Uh, we do egg production, and we also do point of lay production. I mean, you said five years. You started this five years. Five yeah. years ago, where were you? Five years ago, I was involved in a completely separate part of our business. Okay. Uh, we manufacture leather and we export agro-produce. Okay. So that was when I uh, done my research on poultry and I've insisted um, on myself to establish a poultry farm. And uh, thankfully, uh, so far, uh, we've grown um, year by year and uh, we feel blessed to be where we are at the moment. How many birds did you start with? I start with 1,000 birds. 1,000 birds? Enough. Yeah. And now you have 30,000 birds. We have uh, 30,000 layers and we have a uh, point of lay quarterly. We produce about uh, 25,000. So in a year, we're talking about between 75,000 to 100,000. Uh, point of lay. Some people watching us don't know what you're saying. Point yeah. of lay, what does that mean? Uh, point of lay is uh, when you bring a day old chick mm -hmm. uh, from the hatcheries and then you rear it up until the point of 16 weeks, 18 weeks, 20 weeks, just before they start producing eggs. Okay. Um, so that the farmers that don't want to go through the hassle of rearing the chickens, they can just buy these point of lays ready, put it in their farm, and over the course of two, three weeks, they'll start producing eggs and they'll have their way to the bank. <laughs> the person yeah. who introduced me to you told me that you were in the UK. Yes. You stayed in the UK? Yeah, um, I, I spent a few years in the UK. How, how long? About five years. Um, I went for uni in the UK. Um, also spent a bit of time over there, did some internships, um, worked with a few companies. And then you decided to decided leave to come the back few home. companies and come back home. Yeah, exactly. Uh, is something wrong with your brain? Huh? Nah, uh, no, there's nowhere it, like home. There's no, no, you see, if you go to Twitter right now, yeah. I, I, I know a few Nigerians that just travel to Canada and yeah. they're like, 
I'm out of Nigeria. Thank God. <laughs> Thank God in Canada. Thank God in Canada. I'm in Canada. Yeah. And you had a chance to go there. And within four or five years, you decided to come back. You were even working there. Yeah. Why would you do that? Um, there's nowhere like home, honestly. Um, Africa is blessed. Um, so many African countries. There's so many opportunities for you to come and um, explore on, add value to your country, um, provide. Like, um, I'm fortunate to have uh, studied abroad. Mm. And... Um, and uh, I think it's uh, about time that um, people should start coming back to their home countries and adding value where they can, where they see fit. So, I mean, you've added something yeah. by starting a poultry farm. Yeah. We just want to know, do you think that I can become rich being a poultry farmer? Definitely. The value chain is big. Um, we started off by just dealing with uh, the birds. Um, that is um, from the day old chick to the consumer. Okay. Uh, but the value chain is big. Um, you can start, like now we're involved in feed production okay. and we're looking at um, establishing a hatchery as well in order to provide um, B2F, that's business to farm, farm. Uh, with inputs. Um, so yeah, the value chain is big and there's so many opportunities in the whole industry. Okay and they're so it's welcome to so many people to get involved in it and um, i'd be happy to help anyone that's looking to um, come into the business and provide them with any sort of help or consultation that they need you have to take me around yeah is that okay definitely it's a pleasure it's a pleasure <laughs> having you guys around so um, this is how we started oh, okay. um, literally it was just four small pens um, this is where we had our first 1,000 birds oh. and uh, the first um, endeavor was successful and um, yeah that's how we gradually increased our numbers um, quarter by quarter, year by year. I mean starting with the 1,000 birds, yeah. what was the major challenge that you faced when you were starting? Um, it was just not knowing um, the ins and outs of the business, okay. I didn't have anyone to show me um, around or show me um, like a stepping stone into the business so um, it took a lot of um, research uh, mistakes you obviously grow with mistakes and um, so which means that you had no idea of poultry farm you just had no idea so what really inspired you to start a poultry farm then um, it was just reading about the business okay. um, reading about the numbers um, knowing um, a lot of people have been successful in it before okay. and you know no one is uh, no one is uh, anyone that can do something you can do it as well so um, there's nothing that's impossible basically is it profitable it's profitable yes it's profitable um, that's how we've been able to increase our numbers um, over the past five years growth has been organic um, no extra capital injection it was just what the farm has made in profit that we reinvested back into it and are you planning to make it bigger yes definitely definitely uh, we're looking at increasing our layer numbers um, from 30,000 to 60,000 and our point of lay production in a year from uh, 75 to 100,000 to maybe 150 mm. so the market is big the demand is there um, the supply is um, restrained so we hope to fill in that gap by ensuring we can provide more supply into the market. And who are the consumers? Uh, we've had over 50 customers um, that bought our point of lay, including World Bank. They have this program called Appeals Project, uh, in which they buy point of lay from big farms like ours, and then they supply um, small, smallholder farms mm. um, from 100 to 1,000 birds. So over the past uh, three years, since we started our point of lay, we've never had any complaints. Um, and uh, we're just increasing our numbers. The extension that you're doing, yeah? Yeah. So I just want to ask you a simple question, yeah? How do you see yourself in the next 10 years? In the next 10 years, we hope to be um, in uh, all of the value chain. Okay. Um, we want to establish a hatchery. We want to produce broilers uh, for table consumption. Um, so not just being involved in the um, egg production and the layer business okay. and the feed production. 
I, I'm so glad that you wanna try the broilers because yeah. if you had broilers, I would have taken uh, one home. Because I, I love it. chicken, you know. <laughs> like you know, when I went to China, I had I was a classmate, yeah. and the only phrase that I know yeah. is Zen Chikaza. <laughs> 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 so, I'm so glad that you want to have broilers. Definitely, yeah. next time when I come, I'm going to have one. Uh, well, and how many people have you employed so far? Uh, we are employing um, throughout the business about 50 people. 50 people? Yes. You left so. the UK? <laughs> you came to start a poultry farm? Yeah. I mean, some of the people out there might even think poultry is for people who don't have money or poultry is for poor people? Um, uh, why, I th why I think always is that um, every business, uh, you have to start with a single step before you make Fantastic. a giant uh, leap. So um, start with a small step, learn from your mistakes, and then it will bound to be successful as long as you work hard. But so this is the lane section of the farm. Oh, okay, this is uh, the final stage, yeah? The final stage, yeah. Wow. Um, we have uh, 30,000 birds, laying birds. Okay. And in a day, they produce about 700 to 800 crates. 700 to 800, 800 crates? crates, yeah. So uh, how much is a crate? A crate is 1,100 to 1,200. And 700 yeah, to 800? 800 crates a day. That's like 1 million <laughs> naira. Yeah, it should Whoa. be 1 million plus. I mean, like sitting in a bank, you definitely not going to get 1 million naira in a day. <laughs> it's really uh, lucrative, man. Yeah, it's a good... It's a good venture, it's a good venture. Will you tell somebody to venture into Poultry Farm? Definitely, I'll advise anyone, uh, they should try this business out. Uh, just like any other thing that you might uh, want to do, it might be a bit difficult at first, but once you uh, work hard, persevere, uh, it's, a, it's a very lucrative business to be involved in. Very lucrative business. Yes. I mean, I know you lived abroad, you came back here, we have so many brothers and sisters living in the diaspora right now. Yeah. If you have a message for them, what would that message be? Um, they should come back to Africa. So many opportunities, so many opportunities. Uh, it might be difficult at first. Uh, you might hear bad things, um, but um, opportunities are here. You heard bad things about Africa when you're coming? I heard a lot of things, yeah, about Africa, but uh, obviously having grown up here, I knew all of it was false. So um, I wasn't going to be scared into not coming. So this is my piece of advice to everyone uh, that's not in Africa. Come back, uh, things are not as bad as they might think it is. And if you had a chance to change something in Africa, what will it be? Um, I'll say the ease of doing business. Um, if more governments can uh, make it easier for individuals and companies um, to do business, um, I think that would be a huge uh, stepping stone. Um, into enabling a lot of people to venture into their own uh, respective business. What you are saying, which means it's so difficult to do business in Africa. <laughs> That's what you want to change because you're a businessman. But rather, I want to say thank you so much uh, for talking to me. Thank you very much. It's a pleasure. Pleasure having you around. Thank uh, you. You're always uh, welcome to join yeah, us here in but Nigeria. Please, I think I would need to get one crate of eggs before I leave in here. Uh, definitely, <laughs> definitely. <laughs> Don't forget to like this video. I hope you enjoyed this amazing episode. Subscribe and be part of this YouTube channel. We need to reach 700,000. Be part of the 700,000 family. Aya Maya. Peace out.